Hi, welcome back to another episode of Chris Dyer's Creative Friends, the super awesome podcast show where me, your artist friend Chris Dyer, talks to all his super cool artist friends. Today, I'll be talking to Emily Kale, also known as the Funky Priestess. I'll be joining her in her beautiful mountain house in Boulder, and she will be telling me all about her witchy magic, mystic expressions, and these beautiful paintings that she does. So I hope you will enjoy this conversation. Woo-hoo. One, two, three. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Emily. Hi. Thank you so much for having me over your beautiful house, uh, for going out for brunch with me this morning, and yeah, and for wanting to do this interview with me. Thank you. Nice. How, uh, how long have you lived in this beautiful house in the mountains of Boulder? Uh, about two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how long in Boulder in general? I, I was in Gun Barrel before that, but I've been in Colorado like four years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Why Colorado? So I came here um, like on a healing mission. There's a lot of, do you know what rolfing is? It's like rolfing? a type of body work. So there's a lot, the rolfing school is here. There's a ton of healers. What is, what is rolfing? Um, it's like, it works with like your connective tissues to just like, for me, it was, I was going for chronic pain. So just seeking healing. And then I came here and I was gonna move to Hawaii afterwards. And then I was like, all my friends are here. I didn't even know, mm-hmm. not in Boulder, but in Colorado specifically. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just stayed. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful house in the mountains with a gorgeous view, peaceful, you live alone. It's great. Yeah, it's very blessed. Mm -hmm. What do you like about living in Boulder in general? Uh, Maybe on like, you know, is it good for your art career or perhaps just the production of art, but maybe less on the showing? Like, what's your experience living out here in this area? Yeah, I think um, previously I was living in Savannah and it was like way busier where I was living. And where is Savannah? Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Um, I needed like a hermit chapter, so this is perfect for that. I think it's been nice to just be like, oh, my nervous system can really relax because I'm up in the mountains and it's quiet, it's peaceful, Mm -hmm. and um, I've been able to do a lot of healing here, which is really what my art is about, so it's also been good for making art. And then also the collaborative aspect of like there being so many other artists here, um, and connecting with them. Mm-hmm. So your, your health is your priority these days mm-hmm. over say career. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want it to be that way, but it's just, um, yeah, it's been, this chapter has been about like getting my, my body well and, um, it feeds into art. Yeah. Right. But it's like, I'm, I'm definitely more, in one spot then i used to travel around a lot more and i've really been focused on my health and at home a lot yeah that's good because like we could conquer the world of art and get all the things that we think we want Mm -hmm. but if we don't feel good in our body what's the point of it totally yeah so where are you from originally where where did you grow up or where have you lived i'm from virginia um like northern virginia right outside dc okay yeah, which is like, I don't like that area of the world, which is such a blessing because then everywhere I move, I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> Just so. in the contrast of <laughs> yeah, the, till yeah. what age do you live there? Um, I moved when I went to college. So I think it was like 17 or 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then I moved to Georgia okay. um, and lived there for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And then I was in Portland briefly 
um, and for a year and then moved here and did lots of like international travel and stuff in that time. But since I moved here, I've just been really like grounded and painting and chilling and mm -hmm. yeah. Portland's a pretty artsy city too, right? It's great, yeah. How yeah. was your experience there? You were there like a year? I a year. I think um, the weather for me was pretty challenging. I, I definitely need like sunshine, but I loved like meeting all the different types of artists and there's just like a lot of weird people, which I love. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. So, Emily, you're a really great painter. I'm curious <laughs> to know how did you learn to paint as well as you? Did you do some formal schooling? Are you self-taught? What, what's your secret here? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I did go to school, but while I was in school, I was like, I'm not going to do traditional painting at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't interested in painting the figure. Um, I really wanted to be like an abstract psychedelic artist. And then I like the last class of college, I um, discovered self-portraiture and just kind of unlocked like the emotional healing. And then since then, that was like 10 years ago, I've been doing portraits of people in like, you know, an emotionally healing capacity. So that's been my focus. So I didn't learn figure painting in college, but I did go to school for art. Okay. Yeah. What was, how many years you did in college? How long did you do the School of Arts? What's the name of these schools? SCAD, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, and I did a four-year school. Okay. And then I think... Fine uh, Arts? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think uh, my greatest teacher has been Autumn Sky Morrison. I took mm -hmm. a couple workshops from her, and cool. she, like, really helped me unlock some techniques for portraying people. Where did you do those workshops? Uh, one was in Hawaii, and the other was in Canada. Nice. Yeah. British Columbia? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Autumn's great. She's great. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see her again. Mm -hmm. uh, she's me a great too. person and so talented. Just nice. She is. And she's doing her thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so would you recommend, you know, as somebody who did schooling yourself, mm -hmm. would you recommend a uh, young artist to do schooling, to go to college, to do workshops? Uh, as somebody who's done both, yeah. what do you recommend a young artist to do? Um, I think everyone's path is so individual, so I don't have like an overall recommendation. I loved being in art school. I know a lot of people like really hate the art school that I went to and just art school in general. And there were some like pieces of it that weren't great. Like I think it can kind of kill um, some of your creativity because you learn about like what's trending in art and all that. But for me, it encouraged me to like really look at what was meaningful and what I wanted to paint um, and kind of like throw that away. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives I, you something to rebel against. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And just to have the concentrated time of like, OK, I'm really focused on on honing my craft for these four years. Mm -hmm. And even though I didn't like learn the skills I ended up using in my career, um, it was really valuable. And it gives I you time to it. just grow up in general. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, find yeah. yourself and try different mediums mm -hmm. and see what works or doesn't. Yeah. And I love, I kind of love academia. Not everyone does, and that's legit. So, plus, it's an investment of money in the yes. States. Yes, yes, huge investment. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot out of the workshops I've done too. Um, I still like every five or six years try to attend someone's workshop if I can. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. L learning new techniques is like it's opening great. up a new video game. Yeah. That exactly. I might suck at, yeah. but there's so much You're room for learn. growth. Yeah. As opposed to the video game that you already crush. It's like, oh, I'm going to advance, but a lot slower because I'm already plateauing or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what's your medium of choice or excellence? I love oil paint. Mm -hmm. It's definitely my favorite. I've been using acrylic. Um, recently because I don't really have a place that has good ventilation mm. and I'm on this like healing path. So right. I was like, it's probably a little less toxic for me to use acrylic paint. Right. So I've been learning more, diving deeper into acrylic. Right. Those heavy metals and the 
and uh, oils, is, it scares me. Yeah. Those chemicals yeah, and the, exactly. the waters to clean the brush. And I know there's bit, some are better than others. Um, and I, 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 you know, when you were showing me your studio around, I was telling you that, uh, oh, you should get into spray painting because it speed up yeah. your process of making murals. But now it's like, oh, if you're sensitive to chemicals and right. heavy metals. I would have to have like a full ventilate, yeah. Probably like yeah. not the ideal medium for you if you want to really totally. give your body the best chance to, you know, stay Heal. pure yeah. and happy. Yeah. So, but oil, that's, that's a, my favorite. Yeah. That's so soft and blendy mm -hmm. and rich. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it scares me so much. You don't like oil? I like doing it. Yeah. I, I know I could, I, I'm, I know I could do great with it, but it's just such a, like an intimidating it's thing. It's intimidating. There's all the mediums and, and the drying time and yeah. It's almost like very, you gotta. Not there's a I'm, mental block. Everyone, I hear that from everyone who yeah. hasn't painted with oil. They're like, oh, I'm scared. There's a, there, there's a like a uh, intelligence you need to have. Not that I'm not intelligent, but like it's almost, you gotta get in a rhythm and you need a good vent, well ventilated mm -hmm, studio mm -hmm. in Canada, you know, winters are hermetic yeah no yeah. air shall go in or out so mm -hmm. i don't know maybe uh when i move to florida I'll, when everything's just open or yeah. ac that might be better yeah um so you paint the human figure mostly female human figure mm -hmm. and i say there's a, a few people who do the female body and the face throughout history mm -hmm. because women are the most beautiful creature, at least in my opinion, on this planet. And I think a lot of people agree with that. Yeah. So painting something that's already beautiful and, and accentuating it is yeah. like something that I think will always do well as long as humans exist and, and women exist. Yeah. Uh, and People, you know, because a lot of people do it, everybody's got to have their own uh, flavor to it. Right. And a lot of people that I observe will go straight to the, I'm going to paint women, but I'm going to paint hot chicks. <laughs> and that's like, okay, of course that paint's going to be like amazing because, you know, yeah. she's already beautiful and we all love beautiful women. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you don't paint beautiful women, but what you do that I see is different from other people is you have variety yeah. of sex, uh, not sexes, but uh, races mm -hmm. and body types mm -hmm. and vibes. It's not like this idealized, uh, you know, uh, stereotype that you're bringing, yet they're all beautiful and totally. you accentuate that unique beauty. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about it. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I hope I didn't describe it all. <laughs> no, that, that was great. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, I love like different types of beauty. Get me so excited. I'm excited about like all the diverse beauty that there is. And I think it's been about like, uh, for me, like overcoming beauty norms a little bit and like opening up to all these different types. And then there's a piece of it that's just like, I paint my friends and I love that process. Like I was saying of, it started with self portraiture and then seeing like, this is something that applies to painting portraits of loved ones too, where you can offer reflections in a really healing capacity. And I love like hearing about the women I'm painting, like their journey. It's just like this cathartic give and take and like, sharing of stories and then like kind of putting those into the painting um yeah so part of it is about like the internal beauty and then part of it is about like the wisdom that being carries and then part of it is also like fuck beauty norms you know mm -hmm. and everyone's so sexy beautiful and like i just want to paint all of them right so if you're doing a portrait of say a friend or a family member do you feel like you gotta like get really deep into their personal stories, their issues in some kind of psychological way and create some kind of like medicine that illustrates some of their strengths and perhaps even weaknesses to expose it all as a buffet of life experiences along their image? I think it really is situational. Like it depends mm -hmm. on 
sometimes I've had experiences where I'm close with someone and they're sharing their story and it's like, oh, this is a really ripe time for you to get painted. And in those situations, a lot of their stories will come into it. And then often it's like I will be going through an internal process um, and a lot of my paintings are about like liminal spaces, like the space between the ending of one chapter and the beginning of new a new one and like transformation and stuff. So a lot of times I'll, I'll be experiencing that myself and then I'll see something in a friend that like resonates with that and I'll ask them to model for me and then it's up to them what they share or you know I always make sure like are you comfortable with me using this photo and like I want them to feel really good I want it to be like an empowering experience for them as well mm -hmm. um, so it really just depends on the individual mm -hmm. so sometimes it's a specific healing service you're providing to the your person you're painting but sometimes it's also like your friend giving you nice poses of women yeah, in general. Yeah, I don't know that I would frame it as like a service because it's so like collaborative. Like we're, yeah. you know, like. But you're activating them. You're creating some kind of like sacred mirror. Yeah. That shows their spiritual potential. Yeah, that can definitely happen. And that's when that happens. It's, it's beautiful. And then sometimes I'm just like, I had this thought of this pose that represents like rebirth could you pose for me and they're like yeah but then i i know the person and so like they're in my spirit when i'm painting them and it, mm -hmm. it'll come out of it beautiful and you also seem to bring forth a psychedelic aspect to mm -hmm. it right it's i would say like it's a little more mystical, mystical. yeah but it, yeah a little psychedelic right because psychedelic is more like super colorful void yeah. um if you had to relate your mystical prayers or coding mm -hmm. uh if you had to relate it to one medicine it doesn't have to even be a psychedelic medicine mm -hmm. like what would you Ooh, you know, yeah. What's what's you know? Is it tea? Is it's it, tea. Really? That's what I was gonna say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think there's so many different medicines that I've I've sat with and benefited from. Mm -hmm. But when I think about like the vibe of my art and like kind of the medicine I'm imbibing while I'm making the art, like it's tea. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. And tea can be a psychedelic experience. Have you heard of those like you know gung? Uh, Chinese teas that are like sit for a hundred years before you drink them. No. Yeah, there's some amazing. There's some ancient, real potent teas wow. that sit there for so long. It's almost like a gathering of consciousness, mm. and then when you drink it, it. I don't know if it, it makes you trip out, but like you feel, you know, its specialness. Yeah, yeah. So um, beautiful. And when it comes to uh, the use of plant medicines or psychedelics, what's your experience through that? Any influences on both your art and obviously your, your personal path? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how that all relates to my art, I would say like I started as a youngster, like someone who dreams very much and remembers my dreams. And then I, ha I get these kind of like archetypal images from my dreams and using different medicines has helped me um, have a, a more direct communication with that and kind of like save those images so that I can paint them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I, I feel like more connected to like mythology and, and all the ancient stories that kind of like lay beneath all of humanity. And that's like the little piece of psychedelia that I'm interested in portraying. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So what's the difference between mysticism and the psychedelic experience? Because mm. I would say the psychedelic experience is a mystic experience. It is mystical, yeah. But the mystic experience doesn't necessarily need the psychedelic. Right. Mystical could be... Yeah, I think you're right. Mystical could be like lots of things. 
um, not necessarily psychedelic. Like, I think being human is very mystical sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's this also foggy very, day is very yeah, mystical. Very <laughs> mystical. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just like, for me, it's like a little slower and more like tied to myth and story than like these bright, fast color images. I think it's just like the aesthetic is slightly different. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's cool. I, yeah. I, I can I can jive with that. So, do you wanna speak? about some of your experiences with plant medicines and psychedelics? I guess so. It's sure. up to you. Yeah, you don't have to. Like. You can. I, I tend to like be more private about that stuff, but I can think of something to share, you know? What would be your main intention to work with plant medicines and psychedelics? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, at this time, I've been taking a long break. Um, no smoking weed, no drinking, no nothing for three, three and a half years now. Wow, good job. Um, yeah, I actually did smoke some weed a couple times, but then I was like, eh, for the most part. Yeah. Um, and that's been like, that's been his own psychedelic experience, like going, going from being someone who smokes weed all the time and all that to just like total sobriety. Um, that has been like what I need right now, just that grounding and like coming into my roots um but definitely at times i think that perspective shift has been really beautiful and that when i've used medicines has been my intention of just like i'm maybe stuck thinking incorrectly or like just not seeing the bigger picture and i think it helps me to zoom out and to kind of refresh myself and i've also had like like miracle healings in terms of like um, medical problems I had. But I think that that kind of got me stuck in a loop because I was like, I'm going to keep going back and receive more healings. And you can't expect that. Like you you're not entitled to that. Yeah, it might happen and it might not. And uh -huh. it's not really a value judgment. It's just like what is. So Right. And why did you stop drinking and smoking this last three years? Um, I, I've been thinking about that myself. I think it just stopped being fun. I think like I got in a place in my life where like a lot of change happened quickly and my nervous system was just kind of like frazzled. And then instead of being like relaxing, it would like kind of like spin me out and I would feel like more frazzled. So I was like getting strong messaging from my body. like girl cut it out mm -hmm. so i did and you feel healthier now more i do present. yeah i do i also feel like more socially awkward <laughs> really yeah i think i used to like smoke weed and then i would be like okay i'm at this party i don't know just the uh -huh. ritual of it yeah. and then not having that it's been like interesting but i'm really leaning into my awkwardness and really like let's do this awkward thing all the way and right. it's all good ah, yeah yeah like own it mm -hmm. um i can't smoke at a party or in really? social things i'll i'll get hella awkward <laughs> if i do I, see it was the opposite for me where for years i would have anxiety then i would smoke and it would go away and then something just flipped um around like 28 years old where i was like, like <laughs> oh man you got the good effects of weed you, 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 I you're, did you're like one of those movies where they smoke weed and everything's cool yeah, exactly. and the party's just amazing <laughs> it's like hell yeah <laughs> exactly that is how it was oh man but you know Not if you anymore. don't feel it you don't feel yeah. it and alcohol the same like does alcohol like yeah. relax you and make you feel more no i think or? i think it was kind of like it's just like such a social norm mm -hmm. that I would just do it and like sometimes I would have a good time and sometimes I would just be like I don't feel so good but I think like really like a hundred percent committing to like healing my body I was like it makes sense for me to not be drinking alcohol mm -hmm. so. yeah so your Instagram handle is the funky priestess yeah <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's actually like from the Mighty Boosh, like it's nothing sacred and cool. It's from what Old Greg. Do you know Old Greg? No, I don't know what the oh, Mighty Boosh okay, is. Okay, okay. It's like this very silly 
British TV show. Okay. Um, and it's just these guys, they do these skits, and a lot of it is like about funk music, which I love. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I got my Instagram like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and I had watched a skit, and they were like talking about this like sea creature that was like a funky priest. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm stealing that. I like yeah. it, yeah. But it still relates to it how works. you feel. It works, yeah. But it was just like, I liked the way it sounded. Uh-huh, because it's almost like a, a contradictory energy because funk is kind of like a party cool <laughs> thing while priest is supposed to be like a shanty, yeah, yeah. quiet And I, I feel like actually probably neither of those. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> But I mean, I think it works. I think you're funky and I think yeah, you're yeah. a priestess and yeah. uh, I think it, it works well with you and it's perhaps like a, a good meeting point like you know you're, you're spiritual but you also got your um, your things to do it yeah I'm work very with. playful and mm -hmm. like I try not to take things too seriously um, but a lot of my art is like very mystical and about spiritual processes uh -huh. So, yeah, I guess in that way it works. But nice. when I chose that name, I wasn't thinking too hard about it. I was just like, I like that. But do you think it, that handle or that name has helped you? Because, like, for example, I would be telling a friend, like, oh, I'm going to go and, uh, you know, interview Emily Cowan. like, oh, I don't know if I, if I know her. Like, <laughs> oh, she's the funky priestess. I was like, oh, yeah, I totally know her. <laughs> it's almost, like, more rememberable. Yeah, yeah, probably. Did, did you just leave it as your Instagram handle or have you transferred it to other parts of your career? Like, it's... it's I mean, I think that people uh, definitely relate that name for me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, like, going to be in a gallery or something, I just use my name. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's uh, helpful to have an artistic name? I think I think it can be helpful or unhelpful, depending, because we change so much, especially like when we're young, and you might end up like having this name that you're like, I really don't like that. Right. It doesn't relate to me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I think if you get lucky and get a good one, it's great. Um, Otherwise, you might end up with something silly, and you're just like, I want to get rid of this shit. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny to have artistic name. I, I like my name. Your name's great. Your name's good, too. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, artists who will keep their first name real, and they'll, they might switch up the second name or change it to their middle name mm -hmm. to, you know maybe go more with vibe, but yeah, vibes change. They do, so yeah. So who knows if we, we chose the, the right one. Yeah. So uh, since you're a priestess uh, of some kind, artistic, creative, mm -hmm. do you believe in magic? Yeah, I do, I do. Tell me about it. Okay, well, I think it's shifted a lot over the years. I think I, I used to have like a, a way more kind of like sweet and naive perspective of magic where I would be like it's one-to-one -one or like I don't know how to say this it's almost like um, when I was a little younger I really thought that like everything was kind of in my control and if I just like held this certain vibe and like did these certain rituals like life would unfold in the way that I, I wanted and then like growing through like some adversity and like difficult things, I don't believe that anymore. I think that like we're not in control of everything that happens, um, but I think that there's like still magic in that. Mm -hmm. And um, even through like the most difficult experiences I've had, it's like pushed me deeper into um, the, the magic of like being a human being and like the depth and so there's magic in that. And I do do rituals. Um, it's just kind of like a lovely habit and I love it. Um, but I don't feel like, I feel like nothing is in my control. And the more I like relax into that, the more there's like an internal flow of magic. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I believe in magic. My relationship to it has shifted a lot. Right. You surrender with whatever is, mm -hmm. but also you can put your spells out there mm -hmm. to attract the most that you prefer. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm down with that. And then like whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. And and also like having rituals and like I pull tarot every morning, like little things like that. Um, it's like meditating or something. It's like a habit that that creates a thread in your life of continuity. And I think that that's a good thing. And presence. Yeah. Because here, when you do a ritual like pulling tarot, you got to observe like, oh, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. And what does this mean in relationship to how I feel in life right now? Right. Well, how do I feel in life right now? Exactly, yeah. Introspection and self-awareness and Ooh, yeah. A bird just crashed into your window. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's okay. Uh, I saw just a bunch of feathers That's explode. That's never but... happened before. <laughs> he wants to join the party, yeah. poor guy. Um, what other ritual do you do that, that in, your, in your daily that it's kind of like a, a spell or incantation or calling in the energies you prefer? Yeah, um, so I do like full moon rituals. I do a burning bowl, which is like salt and alcohol, and then you set it on fire and it creates this like really magical blue purple fire. Whoa. And I do that on the full moons. And it's kind of like when it was introduced to me, um, this is so cheesy, but the person was like, it's like super sage. Like it's like, it's a clearing ritual. So, um, whether or not you believe in like metaphysical magic stuff, it's like, there's something about setting a space of like, I'm clearing out everything that needs to go from this past moon cycle. And like, I'm going to sit mm. for an hour and gaze into this fire. And this is like my time to clear. Um, so I do that. And then with like, the nervous system stuff, I've created like some rituals because I think being a highly sensitive person and then just not using um, a lot of plant medicines anymore to kind of mitigate some of that. I'm just kind of like raw dogging reality. It's been like really intense. Um, so one of my daily rituals is like if I notice that I'm, my nervous system is like activated or something, I'll just say my full name three times and it's like kind of like I'm calling back my energy mm. and grounding. You're centering. Mm -hmm. I'm like here I am. Yeah. That's interesting about the full moon fire thing because today is a full it's moon. It's a full moon, yeah. And are, are you, we're going to Morgan's later. I can bring my fireball if you, if you would like to partake. I would love to see your okay. magical fire. Yeah. And I believe in magic and I believe in intentions and I believe in prayers mm -hmm. and I believe in belief. Yeah. Believing in things, it's what helps create reality. Totally. We're all agreeing to believe on a number of things and collectively we're creating reality but i guess us magicians witches and wizards mm -hmm. you know artists are here to change the code to believe a nicer more positive world as possible mm -hmm. and our paintings are almost like advertisements yeah. for the belief <laughs> yeah. on positivity yeah or or a, a, of a world of magic and mysticism right. and balance yeah um, and then touching on the whole thing with the nervous system, uh, you were telling me on the ride here that you liked rapé. Do you use it much? Because for me, when I'm nervous and I need to calm down, I just do my rapé mm. tobacco snuff and it really kind of like calms me down a lot. Yeah. And, you know, it, I got to know when to do it because sometimes I don't want to be too relaxed. Right. Like sometimes I'll do rapé before one of these interviews. And then I'll be like a little bit, not like just chilling. Too, yeah, too yeah. chilling. <laughs> but uh, sometimes if I'm like really like ungrounded and uncentered and nervous, rapé can bring me back mm -hmm. to the center. Like, do you use I it I love much? it. Um, I think I went through like a year or two where I was using it quite a lot. And then again, like I'm just doing this experiment with like mm. being pretty sober. So, I mean, not that that's not sober, but I think it just kind of, naturally like flowed out of my life i think maybe i was like overusing it mm -hmm. um so yeah i what haven't was, what was overusing it like every day like once a day three times a day five I, probably once a day but for me i think i was like um just getting a message of like cool it so okay yeah I, nice. there's nothing wrong with that it's an individual right thing but 
-hmm. I think just like putting something up my nose all the time. I'm like, okay, like take it's kind of stuffy sometimes. Yeah, nose. yeah. Ah. So, and it, I think I'm pretty like habits flow in and out of my life. So I had that for a while, and then was kind of like, I think, I think I'm overdoing it and need to put it aside. Mm -hmm. But now I would do it like like in a ceremony type of setting or like I had a friend visit me in June and we did some and mm -hmm. it's not like a common thing, but mm -hmm. I really like honor it and enjoy it and it's great. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's, that's cool that you know what you need or not. To me, especially if I was to remove alcohol and weed, mm -hmm. which are still present in my life to some degree, uh, Rapé is always there for me, you know. It's lovely. I, I yeah. do I do it every day, at least once a day because I I, I kind of need it to fall asleep. Mm. It puts me to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I, I, I got a little bit of insomnia. I'll just be lying mm. there in bed. But if I do rapé and it relaxes me, I just might fall into it. Yeah. And yeah, any other times that I. I just want to give myself a little reward, like, oh, yeah. you just finished this mural, Shh, let's do it and let's yeah. vibe with the mural or, you know, like finish that design and give yourself a, like, instead of smoking a joint or drinking a beer mm -hmm. and getting drunk, just like a quick tobacco buzz, but also a call in for presents and like, sure. where are yeah. you at here? Yeah. And, well, so. you're making me want to do it now. I'm <laughs> lovely. I brought some good stuff <laughs> okay. we can do later during our <laughs> mystical ceremony that at, at Morgan's great. later on. Yeah. Thank you. And with the sleep thing, it makes me think about like, I have, I don't know if you call it a disorder. It's like, I make like, you're supposed to have somewhere between one and 50 like units of melatonin. And I make like 15,000. So I'm like a very sleepy person. Oh. And I feel like this is like a big part of my creativity and dreaming is like, I feel connected to the dream world. And, and just like very sleepy all the time. Okay, sleepy is good. A good rest is rejuvenating. It can be, yeah. But being tired all the time is not ideal. It's not great. Ideal, because no. you need energy to kick ass in the I day. And I am observing you drinking yeah. yerba mate yeah. to boost up your, your- All the time. But So that's caffeine, but with no sugar. Right. Do you avoid yeah. sugar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else do you avoid? Um, I I have a lot of food allergies, so mm -hmm. um, I basically avoid processed foods and um, yeah, sugar included. I love like fruit. Fruit sugar is is good with me. Right. Um, gluten. Can, gluten can't do. Soy can't do. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you know why that is? Uh, well, I have celiac, uh -huh. um, which is like gluten allergies. And then, um, no, I don't know. A lot of my symptoms are kind of like, I've gotten tons of different diagnoses, but um, it's still kind of mysterious. So So this is an autoimmune disorder? Uh-huh, yeah. What does that mean to the person who doesn't know what that is? And why does that happen? It's, there are so many different ideas. Like some people think about uh, the model of like your body is attacking itself. I recently heard a theory that you're getting, you have some kind of pathogen or um, some toxin, like you got heavy metal in your body and then your body is attacking that. And so it can appear as if your body is attacking itself. But I think um, the jury's kind of out. There's no like mainstream scientifically proven, like this is why autoimmunity happens. Um, so it's really like an exercise in like letting go. It's very hard to be like, I have these symptoms and I don't get to like tie it up in a bow and be like, this is why this happened. This is how I fix it. It's like, you have to learn to be graceful with like not knowing and, um, kind of rolling with the punches. And for me, it means like, I get sick a lot. I have a lot of pain in my body. Um, it's just kind of like really changed my life experience quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry you, you, you dealt with those cards. Thank you. From my personal observation, uh, people who have this physical 
pain and displeasure as part of their reality are the ones who do extra work to overcome it both physically and psychologically yeah. and makes him uh I don't want to compare it anyway, but anyway, but a, a better quality human being. I, I, I think the people that I look up to and the people I know that deal with chronic illness and pain, like I admire them so much. I'm just, it's so amazing to, it's like everyone's walking and you're like swimming through water to do the same things and mm. to like not become embittered by that, but to kind of use it to have more compassion for all human suffering right or to just like get through it and still human you know i i love everyone who's doing that work right yeah. i could imagine it could crush you, you oh yeah you could really want to just like fuck this shit yeah. throw the <laughs> towel why why yeah. me yeah you and know. i mean i've been through that with like the anger and that's like totally legit and um i think when I started to acknowledge my anger about that and like work through it instead of being like, stop being angry and sort of bypassing it, I think it alleviated like some degree of my suffering because it was, you know, just going into the thing, into the feeling instead of denying it. Um, it just, you're back in the flow of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good for you for doing the work. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you, are a great painter, you play with magic. Do you have other interesting hobbies or activities in your life that you do? Yeah, yeah, I love animals, okay. um, like a lot. I mm -hmm. have a tortoise and mm -hmm. a dog, but um, I could see, I'm kind of at this crossroads where I'm, I have this show coming up and I've been doing this work for like 10 years and I think after this, there's going to be big shifts coming, and I might be doing some some new things. With you my mean time and in energy. general in your life? Both with my art and in general. Like I've thought about like going to school to become an art therapist or learning. Like there's a, a couple of healing modalities that have helped me a lot. So I thought about learning craniosacral. Mm. Um, just I, I'm into like connection is like my most my place of joy um uh -huh. so i think doing some healing modalities that are like very much about connection and healing and i also just love spending time outside hiking and i love writing and reading i'm like addicted to stories i just constantly am imbibing stories reading them listening to them Both. writing them all okay. i mean I'm not, I'm not great at writing stories. I feel like I'm, I'm more right about like my personal experience or I like writing poetry, but mainly listening and reading. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Um, so would you call your art like visionary art? It seems to be part of that movement. What does visionary art mean to you? And you know, how do you observe that whole uh, platform or movement or scene? that we're part of? I'm like unclear on like what the definition of visionary art is. And um, I, I don't necessarily call my art visionary art. I think I call it like mystical art because um, that feels like it fits pretty neatly. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't have any problem with it being called visionary art. Mm -hmm. My interpretation is that Visionary art is like when the artist has visions in like the plant realm or dreams and then brings them through and onto campus. Mm -hmm. And that's great. I feel lucky to be like part of like a mostly like cushy, loving art scene, you know? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah. Alex Gray defines visionary art as art that comes from the mystical experience. Okay, so mystical art, visionary yeah. art, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems to relate. And uh, visionary art is such a big umbrella term. Yeah, I think people have changed, like, the meaning of it too over right. time. Or b p different people got different uh, interpretations or ideas of what it means right and there's so many branches to the tree mm -hmm. you know surrealism right. um, dark 
you know, yeah. demonic realms, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, psychedelic, you know, 60s kind of art. Right. Like, there's just so many branches to expressing the non-physical worlds or mm -hmm. states or, or feelings. So, yeah, well, thank you for your opinion on it. Um, would you say you're a politically minded person? Is there some cause that interests you that you like to support? I would not say that I'm politically minded. Okay. Um, I think that like, I, you know, I feel like bad that I'm not more political because I think that uh, a lot of people I know who are political activists are doing amazing work. And then I almost think like that same energy can be mirrored in different ways. And even though like I'm not political, like I'm a very deep feeling and, and caring artist person. So I definitely try to make art um, that portrays that. And, you know, I care about like humanitarian issues and environmental issues but just like the energy of like the sport of politics like wow <laughs> right because yeah. politics unfortunately is like picking on one side and probably making the other side not as good yeah, or yeah. cool or whatever and yeah it's just a fight Mm -hmm. uh, even though there's good intentions, right. you pick a side because you think your side is the correct one, but right. your side's the one that's going to heal the situation, right. but does it? And sometimes people get great work done in that way, mm -hmm. but it's just like not a place that I can exist in. Yeah. And, you know, I try to do my best to like be informed about important things and to be a good person, but, um, not a very political person. So who are you going to vote for in the next election? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> so you were telling me earlier that you're taking a social media break. Yes. Please tell me the importance of not being glued to your phone all day long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I had a moment earlier in the week where I just like had to check myself because um, I lost perspective. Um, I was really like feeling disheartened. Um, this is the first time I've, so I've been struggling with illness since 2016. And this is the first time I've been well enough to work full time again. So I've been in my studio every day, working very hard towards a show that I have coming up and a tarot deck. And I wasn't getting like the feedback on social media that would have felt really encouraging and really good but I had to like check myself because I was like, this life that I have is, is really good. And I was kind of being like, wah, like no one likes my post. And I was like, girl, like perspective. Um, and, but then also like it's designed to mess with our dopamine. So that's the experience that I was having that we all have. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate like the venue to get my artwork out there to people that it vibes with but I gotta take breaks. Right, that's great and that's very healthy. You, we can't let the social media control our lives or states and emotions as much as it's a blessing and it helps us. Right. But if Babylon system decides to take away this great power they gave us, yeah. it's like the illness. You can't control it sometimes. You just gotta roll with the punches and have faith that everything will work out in the end. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely, uh, think that it helps us, but it could also make us ill and definitely, definitely right now the, um, platform is helping us a lot less. Yeah. Are you shadow banned? Would you say you're shadow banned? What, what's so going on? I, I feel silly saying I'm shadow banned because it makes me feel like I think there's like this invisible social media boogeyman, like ruining my life so i don't know like i'm not getting views like it went from like a couple thousand views on my stories to like my 20 best friends or whatever so definitely i did something that the algorithm doesn't like and right. it was like but you're not by. even political you're not even no. cheering against the interest of instagram or whatever you know i've had um i've had issues come up before 
because of like nipples in my art okay. even though like the rules are like you can have paintings that are nude art is okay but the robots don't know the robots don't know so <laughs> maybe that's what's going maybe i wasn't posting at the right time you know it's like they're not transparent about like what they don't like so right. i don't know what i did but i got too caught up in like the emotions of it kind of and i was like meh and then I was like, girl, like... Well, it's good, it's good <laughs> that you observe it, and yeah. it's good that you do something to check yourself mm -hmm. to not allow that to be your source of happiness or depression. Yeah. That's wise of you. We, I mean, we all struggle with that. I think it's designed to make us struggle with it, unfortunately. Right. That's, like, the cycle. But then I also, like, from a, a zoomed-out perspective, I'm, like, a cyclical being, so... I want my ideal would be to like have more inward times where I like have a week where I'm just kind of like to myself, painting, um, doing yoga, whatever, and then like more social time. So it would be nice if I kind of had a similar cycle with social media. I know that makes it harder when you take breaks because then you like get more shadow ban. But really, you get more shadow by. by I don't know breaks? for sure. I don't know for sure. This is what I've heard. But I think I just got to a point where I was like, no one's interacting anyways, so I'm just gonna like step mm. away for a moment. Yeah. So many artists are talking about it. Like I know, yeah. uh, for example, John Gay, a couple like last week, where I was like, why do I even post yeah, this no stuff anymore if it. no one's seeing it? Yeah. Like it, it's absolutely frustrating yeah. to artists who build their whole career around this platform that allowed it us is. to reach our followers. And yeah. you, you got like, what, 40,000 followers? Yeah, yeah. And, and to not reach even 1% of yeah. that, it's like, what was all What's that for? Yeah. And w will I have an alternative route mm -hmm. to reach these people without having to go out there and hit the pavement too right. hard? Right, right, yeah. You as a, a hermit that like to stay home, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I. I it's it's exhausting like it you know is, we're yeah. getting we're not getting younger and that doesn't mean we don't have the energy to go out there but it means that we want to live like chiller lives with yeah. our families or yeah. whatever or by ourselves whatever we prefer and not have to go out there all the time be like hey guys i'm still here mm -hmm. please buy my shit <laughs> right right yeah especially for me i think uh i've been like working on this painting that was like something new for me and I was so excited and then I put it out and mm -hmm. it was like I didn't really get any traction and so I kind of like felt a little bummed out by that the one of the owl with the yeah yeah I thought it was a great painting thank you yeah I, I love it yeah and it's it's kind of been like a lesson for me to like just let that be enough of like I made this piece that I really love and right that's great one of the experiences that or one of the many lessons I had to go through when I got canceled uh, was uh, like a year and a half ago was like, okay, I gotta like stop doing this like Instagram, social media stuff. It's gonna like destroy me inside if I keep on hearing the madness of voices out there. So let's just quiet that and bring be, it in, bring yeah. it in here yeah. and learn that you're still gonna have a great, awesome, sunny day uh -huh. inside your heart, regardless of what's going on in the phone yeah resilience resilience and then just like physically like you know being in here versus like being out here like definitely feels better and not that it's not a great tool because it is but i i don't want to get to a place where it's like my everything and like my lens that i'm seeing the world through right you can't let it take over too much so tell me about this upcoming show you got coming I have a, a solo show at Medusa Collective. Um, I think we're gonna shift the date, but it's like first or second week of January. Okay. Yeah, and it's um, I it's I'm gonna put some of the older pieces that I've held on to in and kind of like let them go out in the world. If a little they want cheaper. To. Or? Yeah, I, I'm gonna mark some things down. I definitely feel like it's like the end of a chapter, beginning of a new chapter. So. I want to release the babes into the world. Mm -hmm. And then the new work I'm making for it is like very weird, um, which I love. I feel like a lot of the work I've done over the past few years has been like 
cathartic and there's been like grief and longing and like those types of emotions in it. And then I've recently come to this place where I'm like um, really enjoying like being a silly human being. And so some of that is coming into the art I'm making. Uh -huh, it's more humorous. Yeah. Like the owl painting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what does that owl painting mean? Like, what are you trying to say with it? Um, so I, I saw that, I love harpies. Do you know what a harpy is? No. It's like a human bird. Okay. Um, being. Like a griffin? No, that's a, that's a lion bird. That's okay. a lion bird, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's been in all the ancient cultures. Okay. Harpies, like okay. ancient Egypt had harpies. So okay. did like medieval Europe and like all kinds of cultures. And it's just kind of like, um, I like it as a metaphor of like a person with wings or a person in this state of transformation that isn't one or the other yet. Um, and visually it's, it's very silly and cool. Uh -huh. Um, and I was reading this book by a favorite author of mine and she's talking about like the, the, this Royal owl family. And then, um, I was thinking about the archetype of mother night and how she can be represented by an owl. Um, she sees in the dark, you know, mm -hmm. and can kind of like fly between the worlds. Mm. And um, so there was some of that in, in that painting. Nice, who's the writer? Erin uh, Morgenstern. Okay. She wrote, the book I'm thinking of is called The Starless Sea. And it's like stories, uh, just like a new story, but it embodies all these older archetypes and myths. And yeah, it's one of my favorites. So this, this bird human being, what's it called again? Harpy. Herpes. Harpy. <laughs> Harpies. Harpies. Okay. <laughs> Do you believe they ever exist in, in, in this physical plane at, at any point in history? Or is it from a different dimension or did not exist at all? I love thinking about like animals that history forgot. And like, mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure, right, that there were like various states of evolution that like we haven't found the fossil or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I, I think like it is hard to imagine that there were like half bird, half humans that like we just missed in, in a physical way. Mm -hmm. But this is like a interdimensional archetypal dream world figure. Mm -hmm. So in that way, it definitely exists. Right. Yeah. So it existed somewhere. Even yeah. if it's in the world of our imagination, that's yeah. also... It's an important being. It's an entity. It's right. real. I wonder sometimes if the, the beings depicted in, say, Egyptian hieroglyphs that are half man, half yeah. animal, that if that or Liminal like liminal beings, yeah, right, did that actually exist at some point, even if just briefly? I I do a lot of liminal beings in my art more as like a metaphor of like just transformation metamorphosis. What does liminal being Like you're mean? saying, like the in-between being. Okay, like half, a metamorphosis. Half this, yeah. half that. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope they did exist at I hope some they point. did exist too. And yeah. I hope that at some point in the physical realm, not on an astral plane, or but at some point in some time of the billions of years of this planet, yeah. there were fairies and gnomes. And, Absolutely. And just all different kinds of magical. I believe in fairies, mm -hmm. for sure. I think that they're in a different dimension slightly, but uh -huh. it's like really close, really uh -huh. nearby. Right. Yeah. And perhaps some of us are incarnations of some of these beings. Because mm -hmm. you definitely see some women that are She's former fairies. Elf. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and, you know, as you were saying before, I do look like a gnome. <laughs> 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 oh, good times. But um, all the best with your show. Thank uh, you. This is in Denver, right? It's in Denver, yeah. Wheat Ridge, I Wheat think. Wheat Ridge, yeah. And at the Medusa Gallery. Mm -hmm. Have you had much? Uh, you've been here for three years, and I think you told me you were here in the Boulder area, which is uh -huh. forty-five minutes from Denver. Mm -hmm. Have you had much luck exhibiting much in in Denver? Like, what's what's your point of view of that tricky city? <laughs> a, a little bit. It hasn't been like my main. Um, my main way of, of getting my art. It's mainly still online. I did um, have a couple shows last year that I was really excited about, 
um, and, and there's been like a few shows here and there, but um, I would love to be in more galleries and, uh, and have better luck with that. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a on and off sometimes thing. Right. Well, I hope you crush that show. Thank Sell you. a lot. Thank you. Um, we're coming to the end of our interview. Thank you so much. And would you have some final words of wisdom about anything at all to our viewers mm. here today? Uh, I think just what we were talking about is like just always remembering like your soul's intrinsic value and like even as you're on an art path, like not conflating how your art career is doing with like your your value as a, a human being and like always mm -hmm. keeping that in mind and, and loving yourself and others just for like showing up as, as humans. Right. We try our best, but we will always be enough. We will always be great mm -hmm. regardless of how m well we do in yeah. our jobs and, and lives still inside we are the drop of the divine yeah so that's a great message thank you so much for sharing this with us and thanks for having me over your home thank you. and thank you for watching another episode of chris dyer's creative friends <laughs> i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please press like share this with your friends and community so they know about this series comment if you uh uh, have any comments to say about anything we discussed today and yeah subscribe if you want to and uh, i love you and i'll see you next episode blessings Woo! next episode my guest will be linds and lamb i do feel that this city is a good incubator uh -huh. where the the pressures of painting in New York, LA, Montreal, Toronto, and a major international city. That some of those pressures don't exist here and allow artists the time and space to develop at their own, at their own accord. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that, that's which great. I think is a beautiful part of this community. Mm -hmm. So please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share Big thanks and see you next episode. Peace.